Hello everyone, this is Abbebe Chukkala, lecturer and researcher in irrigation engineering at IH Delft, the Netherlands. This presentation is part of MOOC on water productivity in practice. The title of the presentation is Identifying Opportunities to Improve Biophysical Water Productivity. Water productivity can be defined as the output generated in the form of biophysical, money or jobs per unit of water consumption. The biophysical output can be expressed in the form of biomass, crop yield or their derivatives such as meat, calories or protein. The focus of this presentation is on the improvement of biophysical water productivity expressed in the form of crop yield per unit of water consumption, that is, crop per drop. The input to biophysical water productivity, which are yield and evapotranspiration varies across environment and crop types among others. For instance, in the figure, you see yield on the y-axis and evapotranspiration on the x-axis, which are for different crops, tomato, potato, and maize. The crops grown in arid, semi-arid, sub-humid, and humid environments that covers from Middle East to North Europe. The figure on the left shows the water productivity, that is the slope of yield versus evapotranspiration, the highest for tomato, followed by potato and maize. The yield versus actual evapotranspiration, which is a biophysical water productivity, varies even for the same crop. Here you see the scatter plot of grain yield in the y-axis and seasonal evapotranspiration in the x-axis for rain-fed wheat in four mega environment. Even if you see the same environment, there is scatter and variation between the yield versus evapotranspiration of the same crop. The frequency distribution of water productivity shows that there is huge potential to improve water productivity. As you could see from the figures here, in the left is the water productivity of wheat and in the right is the distribution of water productivity of sugarcane. The one from the right is for the same scheme. So even within the same scheme, in the same area, environment, there is distribution or variation of water productivity and hence the scope to improve water productivity. The causes for water productivity variations or suboptimal water productivity can be identified at three levels. As you can see on the screen, from left to right, we have crop, field, and irrigation scheme levels. A number of potential constraints can be identified as causes for suboptimal water productivity across scales. At crop level, crop types for instance, affects the photosynthetic efficiency of a crop. A crop varieties, example, the transpiration efficiency of the cultivar also can be mentioned as one of the causes. In addition, poor crop management, including inappropriate sowing or transplanting date, inappropriate seed rate, and unsuitable crop rotation can be causes. At field level, inadequate field sizing, poor quality or limited agricultural inputs, and poor 
plant protection can be called. With respect to irrigation or water management, insufficient water conveyance or distribution at the main system level and inadequate and non-uniform water application at field level can be mentioned as a cause. Beside rigid irrigation schedule, which causes mismatch between irrigation supply and demand across scheme, that is considering different crops within the scheme, and also along the crop growth stage can be a reason. And insufficient main drain capacity, poor and or inappropriate maintenance of canals and drains can also be listed as reason or causes for suboptimal water productivity. At irrigation scheme or main system level, there are irrigation and drainage related management actions one could implement to improve water productivity. These actions are related to improving water conveyance and distribution efficiencies. The measures include improving irrigation schedule in the main canal network as such the amount and timing of irrigation supply could match the irrigation demand, which varies across space and time due to multi-cropping and or different crop development stages. The other measure is proper drainage system to remove excess water and salt. There is room to improve water productivity at field level. On the screen is the scatter plot of wheat yield versus evapotranspiration in four mega environment. The slope of yield versus evapotranspiration and hence the water productivity varies even within the same environment. The reasons range from abiotic stress caused by temperature, too little or too much of agricultural inputs, and salinity. Biotic stresses such as weeds, diseases, and pests can also be the causes for this variation in water productivity. Therefore, in order to improve water productivity at field level, one can implement appropriate management intervention, such as improve crop management, that is in uh, identifying the proper crop cultivar and also applying appropriate plant density and improved crop variety, improve water and nutrient management, soil management such as land preparation, conservation, tillage, proper drainage, also applying crop protection for weed disease and pest pest management and of course also implementing crop rotation to break the cycle of crop disease and also in its advantage for nutrient recycle. At crop level, one could consider improving water productivity by breeding technologies that improve seedling vigorous, increase rooting depths, also harvest index. And those improvements in at crop level or cultivar level could also see improvement in transpiration efficiency, photosynthetic efficiency, and also developing appropriate growth cycle which matches the expected water supply to requirement and identifying stress sensitive crop development stage.
There are also considerations for water productivity improvements which are non-crop field and irrigation system levels. These considerations which are beyond those three levels include access to agriculture inputs and access to profitable market. Proper policy and support should be in place to facilitate such input and market accesses. Yet, one need to keep eyes and avoid the adverse effect of water productivity improvement policies and incentives. One of such adverse effects is rebound effect, which has been seen to cause transgression of the local social environmental boundaries. Example, food crops may not be affordable for the local and crop production may not be sustainable due to resource misuse example due to pollution and due to over extraction one could follow the following approach to identify and implement optimal farming practices for water productivity improvement the first step is water productivity analysis. That is establishing baseline of the water productivity of the crop and identifying the current condition and practices of farmers. And the second step is establishing the attainable water productivity or water productivity target. And the third and the last is identifying actions for bridging productivity gaps that includes first investigates the difference in water productivity so identifying the bright hotspots and the limiting causes for farmers constraint and the desired practice or achievable conditions and those practices are either of or combination of pest management, irrigation management, fertilizer management, seedling practice, agricultural practice, and land management, which could be different for different areas and for different farmers. And then establish the cause effect relationship that is between what causes the poor water productivity and then the practice that is lacking. And then structure the cause of the productivity gap around major dimensions, example, irrigation water supply, farm input, irrigation management at farm level, and on farm agriculture practice, that is including the market access. And finally, identify the relevant stakeholders, farmers, policy makers, and assign the actions for follow through. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation.